الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لحبت في الله are you tired of people killing maiming slaughtering and destroying countries and all life that is in existence in the name of Islam habit of Allah when we analyze what's going on around the world which is not restricted to the Muslim world alone we see many groups many sects and individuals basing their actions upon falsehood and what's worse than that saying and claiming that is in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth and that it is something that is pleasing to Allah and that it is fi sabilillah and that it is assisting the religion of Allah or that it is raising the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in fact ahabat fi Allah as allama al muhaddith abdul muhsin al abad rahmatullahi alayhi uh, hafizallahu ta'ala was just asked recently about this phenomenon that we see in Iraq of uh, the group ISIS or ISIL or whichever name they uh, choose to refer to themselves as and he said he was asked about them and are they a group that is led by uh, you know should we take bay'a to this khalifa to this person who's claiming to be the khalifa and the leader of all the muslims who's clear a self proclaimed khalifa from a person in a group that is very restricted in their territory who claims to be an authority for all of the muslims around the world wa iyadan billah min batin the sheikh said no instead he he is a shaitan he referred to the leader of isis as a shaitan this leader ahabat fillah for those who are weak in the hearts who will say look the salafis are shooting down uh, another jihadi group another group that is going in the cause of Allah or another group that is uh, taking action in this time uh, of great fitna and trials ahabbatu billah as imam bukhari said rahmatullahi alayhi he entitled a chapter in sahih al bukhari called bab al uh, bab al qul bab al ilm qabla al qul wal amal the chapter of knowledge precedes actions and statements ahabbatu billah this is absolutely relevant for us and a very powerful uh, testimony from the salaf of this ummah of how they regarded knowledge before trying to implement something and this is a sunnah of the prophet ali salatu wassalam and the sunnah of the mursalin wal anbiya alayhim afdal salatu wassalam and the sunnah of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in is that they didn't just jump into affairs every time something became excited or the new uh the new uh trend of the day did not excite them but rather they went back to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam for ilm wa fiqh wa basira on how to deal with these issues so ahabbatu billah don't get excited and think bad about the ulama those people who have spent their lives and their beards have become gray and long and their eyes have become wrinkled from being in the text from being in kitabi law wa sunnatu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and studying the madhhab of the salaf and applying the madhhab of the salaf don't get upset with them those major mountains of knowledge who have served islam that when they make a statement about someone we don't even know who claims to be the leader of all the muslims in the world he's majhul wa hum ma'ruf they're well known and this person is majhul he's unknown but yet you want to sacrifice your wealth you want to sacrifice your property 
You want to break the hearts of your mothers and fathers by going away to distant lands to fight and die and kill in the name of who knows who and in the name of who knows what, but claiming that it is the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ahabatifillah, many of the ulama, the classical scholars, the Salaf of this almost spoke about these issues. And Ibn al-Qayyim also spoke extensively about this, about people being deceived, thinking they were going fi sabilillah, but in fact they were fighting fi sabili shaitan. Ahabatifillah, I'm not going into details about this particular group or any of these groups, because I only know the limited knowledge that I know about them about what I've read about them, about what we've heard about them. But we do know enough to know about many of these groups that they, you kafir ba'dhum ba'd, just like the original Qawarit, they make takfir of one another. What was the situation when ISIS wanted to get together with al-Nasra? Al-Nasra is the group, one of the groups, yantasib al-Qaeda, that is with al-Qaeda as they say, and, and other takfiri groups, who is fighting Bashar the Shaitan. So here you have people who are de deceived by the shaitan fighting against the shaitan. But what happened? These two groups, the ISIS wanted the Al-Nusra to make bay'ah to them, to come under their umbrella. They refuse. And, the bat and battles have taken place. Don't take my words for it. Research it. Where they spilled one another's blood. Is this the code and honor of Ahl Sunnah? Is this the code of Ahli Iman, the people of Iman and faith, the Mu'mineen, killing and slaughtering one another for the, for the sake of one being the leader of the other, one wanting to bay out to the other, when they have no right to do so? The man is majhul, he's unknown, Ahabatifillah. On top of that, Ahabatifillah, let's look at Ash Shabab. Should we go with Ash Shabab? Those people who the leader today was justifying the, the attacks in the Westgate Mall there in Kenya of the killing of women and children. And when he was asked about it, what did he say? What did he say? He said, they kill our children, we kill their children. They kill our girls, we kill our, we, they, they kill our girls, we kill their girls. So this type of mentality of slaughtering innocent civilians, going into malls, shows to the extent of cowardness and is a sign of weakness because anytime you have to do terror, it's usually a reactionary process. Terror is usually reactionary. It's usually not something done, especially by groups and individuals. It's not something done in a power of strength. That means they can't go head up, head on, with their enemies, whoever their enemies may be, uh, other armies and other uh, groups or what have you, but instead they have to go and terrorize the civilian populace. So these people go into malls and call this jihad. These people go into malls and kill children and women and old people. And they call this in the name of Allah? Don't you think they'll be called before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Doesn't Allah say that when you kill one innocent person, it is if you killed all of mankind. So what do you think about the one who goes with an AK-47 or who goes with a whatever type of weapon he goes and just picks off children and just picks off mothers of children, terrorizes daycares? How much misguidance can you be? What kind of jihad are you trying to fight? Ahabatifillah, avoid them. Because we don't want to hear and see our youth spending their wealth, wasting their wealth and their lives and breaking the hearts of their mothers anymore. We don't want to hear this. And it's time we begin to speak out against this evil and this wickedness. Ahabatifillah, if that's not enough, what about Boko Haram? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا بَوْكُ Haram. These people have a name. And they refer to themselves, from what we understand, that they prohibit Western education or secular education or what have you. So, in the name of opposing secular education, 
They kidnap Muslim schoolgirls. They fight the authority of the country, killing Muslims, non-Muslims, everyone, trying to start sectarian strife and terror because of their weakness. And again, they try to justify it with verses from the Qur'an, from the Holy Qur'an, the speech of Allah. Don't you think they'll be held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for causing and tainting the beautiful, pristine religion of Islam? Giving that to where Islam now in many minds, not just the Western minds, but around the earth, for many people, is synonymous with terror. That's what it means to many people. When they see Islam or they see Muslim, they think only terror. They think weapons. They think beheadings. They think cutting out the tongues of people. That this is... Is this what you would call your mother to, your non-Muslim mother? Is this what you would call your non-Muslim father to? Your aunts and your uncles and your cousins? Yes, become Muslim, and I'll show you how to cut someone's throat. Become Muslim, and we'll teach you how to kidnap little girls and children. Become Muslim, and we'll show you how to pick up a weapon and shoot the people in the mall. Become Muslim, and we'll show you how to hijack a daycare. Wa'iyadun billah. Ahabati billah. Use your aqam. Islam does not take away using the mental faculties. In fact, it encourages it. As long as it's in, in, in uh, conjunction and in accordance with the shah, with the sharia of Allah. And any healthy person of intellect, any healthy intellect, person of intellect, would not justify this kind of wickedness. Even when this individual from the leader of Al-Shabaab was justifying this, initially you could see a human reaction, a pause. And then he said, you kill our children, we kill your children. It's time for us to remove our mentality from the playground. You took my popsicle, I take your popsicle. You stole my lollipop, I'll cut your head off and take your lollipop. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you cannot fight, you cannot do anything unless it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you cannot have anything and say it is in the name of Islam without it being truly from Islam. And in order to have any of your deeds accepted, they have to be in accordance with two conditions. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which I don't doubt that some of the people have sincerity when they spend their money and they leave from Britain and they leave from uh, Chechnya and they leave from uh, uh, the United States and they leave from this to go engage in a cause far off. I don't doubt their sincerity. But what we doubt is the other condition, is that they fulfilled the condition of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because most of these people are ignorant. Most of these people are ignorant youth. Many of them didn't even practice before. And then they think they're going to do this one deed that's going to redeem them with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in fact, this deed could be something that could throw them into the hellfire because maybe they killed innocent people. Maybe they're going to reinforce falsehood. We ask that Allah the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and guides our youth and protects the Muslims everywhere and guides humanity to the beauty of Islam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.